Hope you guys have enjoyed the previous videos by learning in and out of collection framework. Now it's time to learn about another beautiful concepts and interesting topic in Java, which is multi-threading. I heard from many developers saying that multi-threading is one of the toughest topic in Java. The reason behind that is people think like, okay, it is developed by Oracle Java team where it is core level, the language level, and it is very difficult to understand the concepts, how it is actually working internally. So I have taken the toughest topic and split into multiple videos and want to go in and out of each concepts in multi-threading and I want to make you guys feel comfortable in terms of like before appear for any interview as well as coding and also I will go through with the real-time programming so you guys will understand where we really use multi-threading in our real-time programming in our client place. In this video we are going to learn about what are the different types of constructors we have in thread class and why it is important to learn the constructors and how we can able to use that in the real-time programming. Without any further delay, let's get started. If you guys see here, I have written the different types of constructors in a thread class. Basically, we know that using the thread class, we can able to use a multi-threading concept in Java. That is one way that we can do it. So thread is a class in Java. It has its own methods and also it has defined with its own uh, types of constructors we have. So Oracle team, when they define a thread class, so they have come up with the list of uh, constructors they have defined. Now, as a developer, we have to know what are different types of constructors they have inside the thread class so that we can use it accordingly based on our real-time programming. So let's uh, go through one by one and what are the different types. So first one is thread t equal to new thread of. So without any arguments for the constructor also, you can able to uh, create a thread. So basically, this is the first simple way of creating a thread. And second way is new thread of thread t equal to new thread of runnable r. So basically, this runnable r is basically where we will use it is if your class is actually implementing a runnable interface. And for that class, you are going to that for that implemented class, you are going to create an object, right? So that r is nothing but the implemented class object of the runnable interface. So that you can have to pass it here. Only then this thread will be created. And this thread you are going to actually start it because in the runnable interface you don't have any start method. So this is the only way that you can able to start a thread if your class is actually implementing runnable interface. Now there is another way basically thread t equal to new thread of string name. So here this name is nothing but the name of the thread. So when you create a thread also at the same time uh, you have an option to uh, set the name of the thread. So if I want to uh, create a thread with a name let's say red stack right then I, what I can do is thread t equal to new thread of within double quotes I can define let's say a red stack. So if I say what is the uh, current name of the current thread it will say red stack. That is the beauty of it. So while creating a thread itself you can able to define the name for a particular thread. So this is another way of doing it. Now thread t equal to new thread of runnable r comma string name. So here also you can able to combine these two combination of runnable interface which is like implemented class object and also the name you can give it to the Thread. So this is basically the another way of doing it. Then there's a concept called thread group. So basically in our real time programming, when you are writing multiple uh, threads, right? So you can able to group the threads. So uh, Oracle team, they have defined uh, like a lot of capabilities within the thread concept. Basically you can uh, create multiple threads and you can group it so that like it will be easy for us to see how many threads are inside that particular group. When you go for, uh, you know, app server or something, when you see uh, thread pools, right? There you will be seeing this concept, thread, uh, thread group. So here I'm saying thread group is a class in Java. Basically it is uh, trying to create a new uh, thread group. So when I say class, so you can able to get an object for the thread group. So the way how you can create an object for the thread group is thread group, uh, let's say TG is equal to new thread group of, basically you have to define the name of the thread group so that you can create a thread group. That TG you have to define here so that whatever the threads you are creating here, this will be part of that particular group. So that is the reason you can able to define the group name here, the thread group name, whichever you have defined so that the threads will be part of the thread group. And also this name is nothing but the name of the particular thread. So this is the thread group and this is the name of the particular thread. So within this thread group, this thread is going to be linked. So that is how you can able to define like within the thread group, what is my current thread name so that like it will be part of the thread group. So this is one way of doing it. The other way is thread t equal to new thread of the same thread group. You don't need to define if you don't wish to uh, define the name for a particular thread, but you want to uh, add your particular thread uh, into a uh, thread group, then you can say what is the thread group name you want to define like what is the thread group object. 
thread group G and then runnable R. So runnable R is nothing but the object reference of a implemented class of a runnable interface. Right? And similarly, there is an option that you can combine all three together. So thread T equal to new thread of thread group G and then runnable R and also string name. So if I want to define a thread with the help of, uh, I want to at the same time, I want to define the name for a particular thread with the help of string name and then for which object, let's say runnable object, right? So that is runnable R and also I want to link this particular thread to a particular thread group. That is also possible. This is a combination of all three. There is another way, the last way, where the same like this, like thread t equal to new thread of thread group you can define and then runnable r, definitely you can do string name and extra one is long stack size. So when JVM creates a thread, so you can also define what type, uh, how much size you want to allocate for this particular thread. So you can also define that. So this is all about like different types of threads, uh, constructors we have. So when I say constructor, if you guys see here, since thread is a class in Java, so you can able to create an object. So thread t equal to new thread of. So no argument, right? And then different types of arguments you can pass it. So many, uh, you know, uh, types of constructors we have in thread. Uh, basically, this is defined based on like whatever we want to implement, we can use it. It's not mandatory that always we have to go by one constructor. We can use it based on what is our requirement. Let's say if someone wants, wants you to write a program by saying that, you know, you have to write a program by uh, setting a name of a th uh, thread and then uh, implementing the runnable interface then you can simply write this method so let's say uh, thread t equal to new thread of then runnable interface object uh, reference and then just say string name let's say register stack right so you can make it in a single line so if you guys write like this so people understand that you are having well versed with all the constructors inside a thread uh, class and also uh, what you can do is uh, the thread is a class which actually implements runnable interface okay so your class also can also implement runnable interface and thread internally implements runnable interface. So what you can do when I say thread t equal to new thread of or thread t equal to new thread of runnable or right. Here also I can pass the thread object. So let's say I have thread t1 equal to new thread of okay and then thread t2 equal to new thread of and the t1 I can pass it here. The reason is that the t1 internally or implicitly it is implementing the runnable interface and hence that you can also pass the thread object over in the passing into the uh, thread object uh, constructor. So these are the different ways. Basically, there are eight ways you have um, uh, different types of constructors you have in thread. And I'm going to write a program to demonstrate all these types so that you guys will know how it actually internally works for each type. And we, you, you guys will be master in uh, threading concepts by end of the video series. This is the practical session where we are going to learn about what are the different ways that we can create constructor for a thread class and how it actually differs in each, right? So without any further delay, let's get see the real coding. So what I write here is, I have written a program where basically there is a main class or main method here we have. Within that, I have written a piece of code, bunch of code, where I'm creating uh, threads in different ways. So what I did here is, let's say thread t1 is equal to new thread of, this is a very plain vanilla form of creating a thread object. So here, if I try, I'm trying to print what is the name of the given thread. In the previous video, we have seen how to get the name of a thread by using get method, right? So if I say thread t1 equal to new thread of, basically I am instantiating the thread called t1 and I'm trying to get the name of it, right? So this is going to print the name of the thread which was created by JVM for the thread t1 object, right? So this is a very plain vanilla form. And now let's see the second flavor where we are going to create a thread of my own object, so of my own class, right? So what I did here is I am writing another class, which is like public class my runnable, which actually implements runnable interface. Okay. Whenever I say runnable interface, so runnable is an interface in Java, which actually has a run method, which we have to overwrite. Basically in the run method where we are defining the job of a particular thread. And that is what the purpose of implementing the runnable interface. And what we're trying to do here is, I am creating an object of my class, which is my runnable. And then I'm creating an object of thread T2, which is like a by plain vanilla form. But what I'm doing here is I'm passing the object of my class, which is my runnable R to the constructor argument. If you, if you guys see here, thread T2 equal to new thread of R, right? So here the R is nothing but the object which I created for my runnable. So this is the other way of creating an object of a thread class. So here actually we created an object of the thread class. Here we created an object of a class, uh, object of a thread class 
for our own custom defined class which is called my runnable so and i am going to print what is the name of the given thread t2 and the third way is to create a thread which is called thread t3 is equal to new thread of by some passing string variable right which is nothing but whatever the name i want right either you can create a thread first and then you can set the name by using set method or by uh, while you creating thread itself you can pass this argument string argument wherein that particular thread's name will be register3 whatever you are passing here so in this line i am actually printing what is the name of the thread which was given here 3t3 the fourth option is thread t4 is equal to new thread of r comma register hyphen 4 so here what i am doing here is i am going to create an object of thread for the my own custom defined class which is r which is runnable class and then i am want to define the name of the particular thread which is called register hyphen 4 this is another way the fifth way is by creating a group thread groups and then i want to link the thread which i am going to create to a particular thread group so for that what i am doing here is i am creating a thread group so thread group is a class in java since jdk 1.0 which was created by the oracle developer team so basically what i am doing here is thread group g1 is equal to new thread group of here i am passing the string variable to define what is the group name i want right so i'm just saying first thread group first tg so here when i'm creating a thread thread t5 is equal to new thread of here i'm defining okay g1 so which means like i'm passing the variable g uh, object like argument as g1 object thread group object and the name so what it happens here is this thread t5 is belongs to this thread group g1 and with the name register hyphen 5 we will see when i execute this program and the sixth way is just to say uh, we can create a thread of my own class custom defined class and then we can uh, link that particular thread t6 to the group g1 and the other way is to same thing like uh, we can link a particular thread t7 to the group g1 and also for for what class right which is like our customized class and also we can define our own name to that like register check here i am defining as a register check and the other last way is to create a thread which is like t8 new thread of we can link a particular thread to a particular group thread group g1 for our custom defined class runnable r and also what is the name you want to define it's just like register check and also you can define the length or size right so now i am going to execute the program so that you guys will understand clearly here you go if you guys see here the t1 right so t1 is a basic one basically i create like with very plain vanilla form so with if you don't define any name for a particular thread when you create so the thread name given by the jvm is nothing but thread even 0 for the next thread it will be thread even 1 so this is how actually these threads names are given by jvm by default by java and here if you guys see here t2 is thread even 1 so this is a, a thread name of the, the t2 which i am passing the runnable uh, object as a parameter to the constructor and if you if you guys see here t3 so t3 is created with the name as register hyphen 3 and t4 is created with register hyphen 4 and t5 is created with the name register hyphen 5 so this is how actually you can create each threads in each different ways by defining its own parameters or attributes at the same time if you guys see here i am printing what is the name of a thread group it belongs to so all these threads let's say t5 right so t5 belongs to first thread group how i am getting the name of a thread group is nothing but from the thread i am getting the thread group first by using get thread group of and then dot get name so here it the get name is is going to get the name of the particular thread group it belongs to this t5 belongs to where it belongs to is based on where we are relating this one so when we create a thread t5 we link the thread t5 to the thread group g1 and that is the reason when i am getting the name of a thread group it is printing first tg which is nothing but whatever we created the thread group with the name first tg similarly t6 t7 t8 all these threads i linked with um, the group g1 and hence i am seeing all these threads are belongs to the same group so this is basically uh, helps in terms of when you write a uh, uh, app server or any web servers right when you want to group list of uh, complex threads into a particular group right uh, to define the categories the threads right that is where the thread group actually works when we go to uh, the upcoming videos where we are going to define uh what are the ways that we are going to deal with thread groups then you will get more idea about how the thread group works but for now you have to uh, i hope you guys are understanding about uh, how uh, how to create a thread with different types of constructors uh, without passing any parameters in the thread constructor and how uh, by passing the runnable object uh, thread r 
and then by passing our string variable which is like nothing but a string parameter uh, to uh, to set the name of a thread while creating itself and similarly uh, so on all these types right so i hope you guys have understood this concept please try to execute the same program in your eclipse and see how it goes and let me know your comments thank you guys bye bye i hope you guys have understood the concept very clearly but still if you guys have any questions or any clarifications required please post your comments in the comment section and i will be more than happy to assist keep watching all our videos there are a lot more videos to come and if you guys like this video please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel and share with your friends don't forget to hit the bell icon thanks for watching i will see you in the next interesting video guys